I didn't choose to be an activist. Before 2011, I was just a happy mother of two beautiful girls. I'm a dental surgeon, not really engaged with politics. Valentine's Day 2011, that's when it started. I received a text that people are gathering at the Pearl Roundabout. The wave started from Tunisia, then Egypt, then it was a natural thing that it would come to Bahrain. People said something about the, there's a need for a medical tent to treat the injured protesters. The prayer roundabout lasted for a month and then there was a crackdown. The first few hours they went after the, the heads of the political opposition parties and societies. Uh, immediately next day, they went after doctors. Mommy, are you gonna talk I was the first female detainee. I was asleep with my husband and my kids, they were in their rooms. There were about two dozens of masked men, fully armed. And they told my husband, we're here to take her. In the first two months, I was in solitary confinement. I was beaten all the time, kicked out, spit at. After the two months, I was released. Six months later, we were brought to the military court. That was the first time when I knew my charges were like occupying the, uh, the public hospital, uh, overthrowing the regime, inciting hatred, being an agent, guns and weapons. Weapons and regime overthrowing, it's not even in my world. We were about 50 medical practitioners. It's our oath that we will help people with no discrimination, regardless any situation. The military judge started to read the charges against us, and he came to my name. I was sentenced for 15 years. We sent a message to the King of Bahrain to consider release of these medics and all protesters in Bahrain. There were protests all over the world. People couldn't believe that there's a country called Bahrain doing this to its own doctors. After my release, I figured out with my other colleagues, we were all subjected to torture when we were at prison. We figured out that we have no place to do rehabilitation for the victims of torture. We decided to establish Bravo, Bahrain Rehabilitation and Anti-Violence Organization to give rehabilitation work to the victims of violence and torture and their families. In my part of the world, people, they do not understand the importance of psychological rehabilitation. So I tried a different approach. I launched a channel at the YouTube giving weekly episodes on how to deal with life, how to deal with stress, how do you stand up for yourself. These general topics are designed to change the mindset of the people. If you're able to stand up for yourself in front of uh, your parents, your partner, at school, and then definitely you're going to grow up to be able to stand up for yourself in front of an abusive regime. I'm thinking of it as a process. We will take it gradually till we get the change we require. We have to plant the seeds now. I hope to see it in my lifetime. But if not, then I have my children. <laughs>